My name's Neil Chandler. Um, I'm a database guy. Um, apparently, I know things. Oh, off the top. Um, bit surprised to see quite so many of you here. Um, the very last session of a conference, and it's it's kind of you know the the, the fat old guy talking about database performance, I suppose. Um, I've been working in IT since probably before most of you were born. Um, and with Oracle, since about 91 on Oracle 6 something. Um, and I'm an Oracle Ace director, which means I enjoy this sort of thing, apparently. I know it's the last session, um, and I have an airplane to catch after it. I will not run over, otherwise I've got a very long walk home. <laughs> When you write some SQL for your application, Oracle runs it through the optimizer to determine the best access path to your data. And it does something like this. No, it doesn't drink uh, uh, Coca-Cola. It's definitely Coca-Cola, it's not beer. Um, it takes a parsed representation of your SQL statement. It doesn't actually parse what you put in. It changes it a little bit. It makes it a little more understandable, a little easier to digest, and it plugs it into the optimizer. It then takes some statistics that it knows about your data, and it generates multiple plans for ways to access your data. It picks the plan with the lowest cost, and it runs it. Now, Oracle's weighing up a lot of information about your query to work out the best way to get to the data, and it's got a limited number of guesses to get there. If you're doing a five-table join, you could have about 30 million different access paths to get to the data. Now, you've only got 2,000 guesses. Or Oracle's only got 2,000 guesses. So the optimizer is going to get things wrong in the name of expediency. When you've got 2,000, when if you've got 30 million possible access paths, and you try every one to work out the best way to get to the data, you're going to get to a point where you say, actually, let's just stop working at the best way and just go and get the data. Now you may be thinking, how? How are there 30 million access paths on a five-table join? Well, first of all, Oracle's got to work out the join order. Does it join table? A to B to C to D to E? Or does it join table A to B to C to E to D? Or does it join table A to B to E to C to D? Or whatever combination there. That's for five tables, five factorial. That's about 120 possible permutations of how it should join them together. It's then got to work out how it's going to join each individual table together. Should it use a nested loop? Should it use a hash join or should it use a merge join? That's Oracle's three options. And so that's three for each of the joins. You've got five tables, four joins, three times three times three times three is 81. Multiply that by the 120 from the previous calculation. We're now at 10,000 ways to get to your data. And then it's got to work out how to access each individual table, a data access method. Is it going to do a full table scan, an index unique scan, an index range scan, or an index scan, an index skip scan, an index fast full scan, a bitmap conversion, a star schema transformation, a bloom filter, a um, bitmap index single value lookup, a bitmap index range scan. And there's more than that besides. That's a lot of different ways to decide to get to the data. Now, we only really use the first five most of the time. But that's still 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, about 3,000. Multiply that by the original 10,000-ish, 30 million possible access paths. If you've got a six-table join, you've got 2.7 billion possible access paths, which is quite a lot. Now, what I'm not saying here is have only one table to minimize the amount of joins that you need. Um, <laughs> but what I am saying is when you're, um, doing your, you're taking your Java memory hierarchical structures and you're putting them into the ORM and it spits out 250 small kind of key value lookup tables, don't put them in the database. You know, try to actually design the database to 
have a correct number of tables in it. It's very much just off the left left hand edge, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. But the Oracle optimizer always gets it wrong for complex SQL. Always. And sometimes when it gets it wrong, it changes its mind. And usually that makes only a minor difference. And you kind of don't notice. One millisecond or two milliseconds, who cares, usually. But sometimes it's not a minor difference. Sometimes it's not good at all. And sometimes it's very, very, very bad. And that's when you're called to say, the SQL you wrote sucks. It used to be good and now it's bad. And it takes a very long time. So what we kind of want to work out is why did Oracle change that execution plan? What caused it to make a different decision about how it should access your data? How can I make the optimizer make the right decision? And what am I really looking for in the optimizer? Because that may vary. Now, a common cause of a new SQL execution plan, or is it SQL, or is it SQL, is you added some data to your database. Now, I hope you're all adding data to your databases. Um, you gathered some statistics on, a, statistics on at least one of the objects that's being accessed, and that happens automatically every night at 10 p.m. by default. Your plan drops out of memory out of the shared pool or gets invalidated, probably by the gathered statistics. And Oracle re-optimized and came to an entirely different conclusion about the best way to access your data based upon the new stats. Or alternatively, you did nothing. You may have added some data. You didn't change your stats. You switched that stuff off because it's unstable. Kept running the same query day after day after day, and suddenly the plan changed anyway. Now, if I didn't say at the start, I do have a few demos as we go through here, and I'd like to actually demonstrate the plans changing and so we can see what happens. So, first scenario. I've got a very simple table, put a thousand rows of data into it, and I've gathered some statistics. The table has got three columns, it's got an index on each column, it's got a text column, a date column, and a primary key. And if I do a select, we're just selecting by the date, and we're doing a full table access on this table. That's because there is only one date in there, there's only a thousand rows, they're all the same date, it's the best way to get to the data. Now, we put a whole series of extra data in there. And we can see we've got a lot more data there. We've now got 31 days worth of data, 31 distinct days. And the statistics still say there's a thousand rows in there. If we run the query again with all the new data, and oh, we still get a table access full. Still the same way. But if we now gather the statistics, the statistics now reflect the data. There's now, now the statistics now know there are 30,000 rows of data in the table. So if we run the same SQL yet again, precisely the same SQL, it now is using an index because it knows it only needs 1 30th of the data, approximately. It's using an index instead. That's, it thinks it's cheaper. So our plan has changed. First way our plans change. This happens in our database every day. But what if nothing changes? Do the same thing again. We've put uh, 3,000 rows of data into the same table, cleared out the previous lot, and I've gathered statistics. So as far as the statistics are concerned, there are 3,000 rows of data in this table. I put some data on the end, and we've now got nine days worth of data in the table. But I'm not gathering the statistics. I've switched that off because, as we saw in the last example, that caused my plan to change. So, if I run a query for today, and what I'm doing, uh, just so you understand, I'm setting the date in the database to be a fixed date. And I'm doing that so I can keep running precisely the same SQL. It's not got bind variables, it's a static piece of SQL. And if I run that with this fixed date, we can see it's doing a full table scan with a cost of 13. If I change the day up here to tomorrow, so let's change to the 26th, run precisely the same SQL, we get exactly the same query. Cost of 13. We make the 27th, and oh, 
we're doing an index range scan. We haven't changed the statistics. We haven't changed anything at all, but the plan has changed. The cost has now dropped to 10. If we do it again, 28th, we can see the cost has dropped to two. So as the time has moved on, our cost has changed, even though nothing else has. Why is that? It's because when you gather statistics, one of the statistics Oracle gathers is the low value in your database and the high value in your database for that column. So this column, it knows when it gathered statistics that the low value was the 24th of December and the high value was the 26th. That's three days. And it knows there are only three days worth of data in the database. If it knows there's only three days worth of data in the database, if you query for a day above that, it says there is a relatively low chance that the data, because you've described it to me, you've told me what the highest value is, so there's a reducing chance the further away you get from higher or lower value that the data will actually be in there. And Oracle does what's called a statistical decay, whereby it reduces the cost because it thinks there's going to be less and less data in there, even though there may not be. It's very, very important. Mostly, this is a very good thing, but occasionally, it's very bad. But, as we can conclude from that, our plans can change when we add data and gather statistics. And our plans can change when we add data and don't gather statistics. It's not good. Um, so what about no statistics? Well, if we've got no statistics, Oracle uses a cost-based optimizer. And that means that it needs statistics to function. So what it does is it goes and it randomly samples some blocks in your database and uses those, the data that it finds in there, as representative statistics. Now, by default, Oracle sets it to level two, which means if a table has no statistics, it will just go and do a random gather of 64 blocks of data. Now, if you've got a fairly small table, that's not too bad. But if you've got a table with a few billion rows in it, that might not be very representative of your statistics, of your, of your, of your data. And we can increase the level of dynamic sampling that Oracle will do. And if we increase it to level four, it will start to do dynamic sampling if we've got some complex expressions in there, such as ands and ors. Uh, but it's still reading 64 blocks. We can raise this from 5 to 9, which is just like level 4, but we, it reads increasingly more blocks, 64, 128, 256, and so on. And then we can set it to 10, where it's going to sample all blocks for all statements in a full table scan. Now, that may seem a bit crazy. You're going to scan, do a full table scan end-to-end -end of a table just to work out the best way to access your data. And in an OLTP system, that is crazy but in a data warehouse actually might be a very good idea because you might want incredibly accurate statistics for a very complex join. This might be the best way to go. And when 12C came along, you could allow it to turn it up to 11. So it's going to use dynamic stats, even if you've still got lots of optimizer stats, but the optimizer thinks it's a good idea to use dynamic stats. If you're using data warehouses above level four, probably a good idea. OLTP environments, not so much. I don't have a demo for this because the stats are dynamic and I can't get a demo to perform reliably in a presentation. It's just not possible. They're dynamic, it goes and randomly samples blocks. You don't know what you're gonna get. But Oracle tries to be helpful. And when Oracle 11 came along, if you had no stats, or you were using complex predicates, or multiple conjunctive or disjunctive filters, ands and ors, um, Oracle would basically gather information as it was processing your tables. It will look to say, well, how many rows is actually coming back when we're trying to query this data? The statistics say we're going to get 50 rows. How many actually came back, and can we use that information 
to improve the plans in the future. So in 11G, we got this bit of information in the database to show that it was being used. And what it's actually doing is you do the first pass and it gets a plan. It gets the information and, uh, back on the, the cardinality feedback and the cardinality feedback says, your stats are a bit rubbish. Next time, you go hard pass again and use these stats instead. So the next time you uh, do a pass, that plan is not used. It does a whole new plan with the new stats and it sticks with this plan. So you get a poor run and then you might get a really good run. Your plan changes between run one and run two. The problem with this is the plan will may then age out of the shared pool because you've gathered statistics or something like that. And once it's out of the shared pool, the first time it passes, you get plan A again. And then it'll get cardinality feedback and you'll do plan B again. And so that's a bit of a problem because you end up alternating with good and bad plans fairly randomly. Because when the plan goes at the shared pool, all of the information that it gathered was lost. In 12C, they renamed statistics to renamed it to statistics feedback. They've improved it a bit. The use case is exactly the same as for cardinality feedback. We've got this little view in the database, which says, is re-optimizable, why? And if it says, is re-optimizable, re it means it is going to be re-optimized. It kind of comes across the question, it's not. It means this particular cursor is no good. That causes a hard pass and a child cursor. What you may also get is a SQL plan directive. Now, uh, how many of you are using 12.1 in production? Fair few. 12.2 in production? Ooh, couple. 18 in production? Just got to check. <laughs> Still nobody. <laughs> um, now in 12.1, and all my demos are on 12.1 because that's what I find most people are now running in production. There's still a fair few on 11. Um, decreasing numbers on 10, there's not many people left on 10. There's still one or two on nine and eight. I don't know anyone left on seven. If anyone left on seven, you dare admit it? No, okay, no one's seven. Still nobody on seven, right, okay. I'm sure at least one of you is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and tell by the sniggering, definitely. Um, now, a SQL plan directive may get created in 12.1 by default, and this kind of semi-permanently stores the fact that you've got a statistical problem. And SQL plan directives are associated with table columns or multiple columns, and they're not associated with individual SQLs. So a SQL plan directive may affect every SQL in your system. That references that particular column. You may also get some extended statistics created where you may have column correlations magically in the background without you asking for it. Now we can see these in DBA SQL plan directives. And there are two types of directives so far. There's dynamic sampling and from 12.2 dynamic sampling result. Now as we saw just a few slides ago, dynamic sampling is a little bit unreliable because it's randomly sampling blocks. So if your directive is dynamic sampling, what chance do you think you're going to get to get consistent statistics? The enhancement in 12.2 dynamic sampling result actually stores the result of the statistics rather than dynamic sampling for every pass. It's storing the results. So, and the dynamic sampling result directive will go stale when your statistics go stale. So it will only regather them at the point when it believes it needs to. So this is a significant improvement over 12.1. Significant. But these adaptive statistics really are not good for stability. If you're on 12.1 and you have an OLTP system, and you, you have these in your system, you probably want to disable them. You can't drop them, because if you go and drop them, the next time your SQL runs, it goes, oh, it's a statistical problem, let's create a SQL plan directive. So you've got to disable them. And you've also 
got to tell them not to auto-drop because by default SQL plan directives automatically drop themselves after 53 weeks. And so you fix a problem and a year and a week later it comes back. Which is not good really, is it? Now in 12.2 they changed how the adaptive aspect of Oracle works and they split it into two. So we've got now got two statistics, one for adaptive plans and one for adaptive statistics. And by default, they've switched off adaptive statistics. If you're on 12.1, you can backport this. You check this bug reference if you want to backport it. I know a lot of people who've had a problem with this backport. It might be better to use this method and run this in a job repeatedly to disable and stop auto drop for stats. Might be. I'm going to come back to adaptive uh, stuff in a moment, but I'd like to talk about bind variables first. And bind variable peaking. Now, bind variable peaking appeared in Oracle 10 first, and it was a disaster. Um, if you don't know what bind variables are, they're basically a way to substitute, instead of putting literals into your SQL, you put a marker in your SQL, and then you can then supply values to that, and it minimizes the amount of parsing that you need to do for your SQL. And parsing can be a significant overhead in the database. And if we don't need to reparse, we can ex execute the SQL many times, no parsing overhead, everything's faster. And we always want everything to be faster. But if we've got skewed data sets, we've got non-uniform distribution of data, we may want different plans for different data inputs. And so this is what Oracle does to your plans when you've got bind variable peaking. So I've created a table here, and it's got it's the same table as before removed. We've got a text column and it's got two values in it. We've got index plan, which has got one row. And we've got scan plan, which has got 20,000 rows. And you get how these are going to optimize. So, and this is uh, gathered with uh, for all column size auto. And we have a histogram on there describing the data to the optimizer accurately. This is pretty much default behaviors though. So, if we look at the um, stats on the table, we can see how many rows we've got, how many distinct keys we've got. Here's our frequency histogram with a couple of buckets, perfectly describing the data. And if we run our SQL, we've got a bind variable here for scan plan. So we've set it to the scan plan. We run our SQL and we get a full table scan, which is of course the fastest way to access almost all of the data. If we then run the same SQL, but with a different input bind variable, index plan to get one row, index plan up here, we can see that we're still doing a full table scan. And if we look in the notes and the explain plan, we can see it's actually still using the original bind variable. So we run both plans with the same original peaked bind variable. So if we flush the plan out of the shared pool, and do it the other way around with the index plan first. Index plan, just to prove that it's different, it's now doing an index range scan to get the one row. Index plan as the bind variable. And now we try it for a scan plan. And indeed, we do 20,000 rows, still using the X plan, still using the index range scan. It's a pretty inefficient way to access most of your data. So you can see how this is going to cause a problem. Now, this was pretty disastrous in 10. In 11, Oracle got clever. And they came up with adaptive cursor sharing. And what adaptive cursor sharing does is it identifies the fact there's a problem. We've got these extra columns in V$ SQL saying, is it bind sensitive? Yes, it knows we've got some skewed data in there. Is it bind aware? No. Is it shareable? Well, it thinks it is at the moment. It thinks this cursor is good to be shared for different bind variables. And so we run it, 
for the scan plan, this is what we've got in our cursors. If we run it for the index plan, oh, nothing's changed. We got a bad run. But if we run it for the index plan again, it's identified there's a problem and it repasses. Is shareable for the original one is now marked as no. This is not a shareable cursor for your SQL for that input bind variable. The next one, now this is the share, shareable one, that is not. So, that's good. It can get you out of a hole. That would have saved me some very, very long days when I shouldn't have been working. But you've got to run a bad plan before you can get a good plan. And when the plan's aged out of the shared pool, all of this information vanishes. In 11.1, um, this was true where you got an awful lot of um, child curses, but it, it, it kind of, uh, it's, it's not as bad as it used to be. So just a slide telling you about this, you must run a bad plan. In 11.1, it may never be deemed shareable. I've seen a couple of systems that had 10 to 15,000 child curses. And that was a bit of a problem in and of itself for one particular SQL. But what it does tell you when you're developing is you should not necessarily always use bind variables. There are cases where you should be using literals because it may be better. If you're doing OLTP, bind variables tend to be better. If you're doing data warehousing, you're generally better off with literals. Something else that causes um, plan instability is histograms. Now, Oracle loves histograms, especially in 12 and 18. And if you're not aware, 18 really is 12, because 12 is 12201 and 18 is 12202. So 18 and 12 are the same thing, really. Um, and histograms appear on all columns which use predicates. Skews, you may think, oh, we get histograms where we've got data skew, and this is not true. I do another presentation where I prove that skew has got nothing to do with it. You get histograms on entirely regular data sets. And histograms um, use a thing called adaptive sampling to randomly select data to build a histogram. And Oracle tries to select around 5,500 not null rows to build its histograms. Um, and this happens in all histograms, pre-12C, and height balance and hybrids from 12C onwards. Um, one thing that we used to do in 11.2 to control histograms was to use this option for all column size repeat, um, which maintained the histograms that you currently have, but also prevented the appearance of new ones, so you knew exactly what you were going to get, but the ones that you had that you perhaps created yourself were maintained properly. But Oracle changed the algorithm in 12, and it's completely unstable now, and you must not use this under any circumstances. So if you're upgrading from 11.2 to 12, and you use this, you must change it and go to the preferable of uh, method of using DBS stats, set table prefs to set individual preferences for your tables for where you would like histograms to be maintained. This is the way I recommend doing it now. This is now very bad. Now, we've talked about adaptive statistics on this uh, diagram that I stole from the Oracle manuals. But in 12, we also got adaptive plans. And in 12, Oracle can change the plan whilst the SQL is actually executing. There's a part of the optimizer called the statistics collector, which I said before is analyzing the blocks that are being read in and comparing our estimated to our actual number of rows to see what's really happening. And it can switch your execution plan between a nested loop and a hash join during execution. If you're using parallel query, you can also switch uh, uh, between a hash broadcast um, and things, but let's not worry about that. It's far too complex. Um, 
To see this in the plans, we need to use this additional format option, which is plus adaptive. And if we check in this dictionary view, we can see video SQL is resolved adaptive plan, which will tell us if the plan was changed whilst in flight. Null meant it wasn't possible to adapt it. N, it could have adapted it, but it didn't. And Y, yes, it adapted it mid-flight. And uh, I'll show a demo of that. Okay, what I've created is two tables because we need a join. Um, and there were two entirely regular tables, um, test tab two and test tab three, which had an entirely regular data set. I then gathered statistics so it looked like a regular data set, and then I hacked around with the data so it wasn't. It, I, I appreciate it's a little bit contrived. All of my demonstrations are contrived to work in this environment. But all of our data kind of does look like this. So I've got this table join up here. We're joining a couple of tables together based upon a key and based upon the columns that I completely skewed the data on. So it's not representative. If I do an explain plan four, this is what Oracle thinks is going to happen. It thinks it's going to get this many rows, it's going to do a hash join, nested loop, nested loop, he's the statistics collector, and, and all of this, which goes to show how unreliable explain plan has become. This cannot be trusted anymore. If you're doing explain plan, you cannot trust that what it says here and what actually happens is the same thing. So if we do an auto trace, trace only explain, This has changed a little bit, and we get this note here. This is an adaptive plan. But there's nothing Oracle can do to adapt it because we're only explaining it. But it's recognized there's something going wrong. But it's still giving you a not what we're going to get in the end. So if we flush the shared pool and run this SQL for real, we get this as the explain plan. And we've got all of these rows here marked with minuses. And if we read this, this is an adaptive plan. Rows marked with a minus are inactive. They never happened. They started to happen. And Oracle realized that its estimated number of rows here was wildly different to the actual amount of rows that were coming back. And it decided to switch between a nested loop, which never happened, to a hash join. So we've just kind of saved ourselves dynamically on the fly. If we go and look at the um, statistics information on this, we can see in uh, VDL SQL Plan Statistics All, it's recorded these values. It knows exactly how much, now this is just in memory, but it knows exactly how much data was retrieved last time. So if we run this again, we have re-optimizable set to yes. It's going to repass. So if we run this again, we can see we're not using adaptive plans anymore. It's actually used the statistics feedback that we just saw in the V dollar view to repass. And we now get this much neater little plan, hash join, table access full, table access full, because that's the best way to get to this particular bit of data. And now we, our plan, it thinks is good. It's not re-optimizable. But if there was a reasonable weight between the first and second invocations of that, we might have got a plan written down to create a SQL plan directive. A SQL plan directive may have appeared. And if I just run it again and cheat and uh, flush it to disk myself, we can see what happens here. We got a SQL plan directive used for this statement. I mean, I just flushed it in myself. So we've now got a SQL plan directive that is going to be used every time these columns are queried. And if we look in SQL plan directive, we can see we've got these SQL plan directives that are telling the optimizer to use dynamic sampling 
because there's a single table cardinality misestimate. The stats aren't good. However, if we now go and correct the stats, these are still going to be there, and they're still going to be used. And as we know, dynamic sampling is not very good for stability. So what other reasons might my plan change? Well, you might have changed, you know, the DBA might have changed some initialization parameters like the memory pool sizes, or you might be using automatic memory management on your databases, which is, is anyone using automatic memory management? No one putting that, good, you shouldn't, doesn't work. Or you might have uh, modified some optimizer stats, or you might have dropped or added or changed an index that you weren't using. Because it's true that Oracle will use every bit of statistical information in the database that it can to work out the best way to access your data. And it may be using the statistics associated with an index that you're not using, a multi-column index at least, to allow the optimizer to know not to use it. And if you change and drop an index, it may actually change your plans. Or you might have upgraded or patched the database. Although patches generally don't change the optimizer if you're using uh, bundle patches or RUs. The optimizer does fix wrong results bugs and they may, they may allow a change to the optimizer, but you've still got to explicitly enable that. So you're going to know if it's going to be changed. Now, since the optimizer became cost-based, we've been vulnerable to the optimizer guesses with too little time for it to do a proper job. So what can we do about stopping the plants changing? Well, Oracle have introduced four mechanisms over the years that can try and stop the cost-based optimizer getting things wrong. Um, Stored outlines were introduced a long, long, long time ago. And they try to convince the optimizer to use a particular path to get to the data. Um, I'm not going to dwell on them. But basically, they attach a lot of hints to your SQL statement. So you've got your SQL statement. And these are a whole series of hints that the stored outline is going to try to attach to your SQL statement to try and force it to go down a particular path. And if we run our SQL with a stored outline enabled, we can see it's using a stored outline to try and force a particular access path. The reason it's worth mentioning stored outlines is that as at this point in time, they're the only thing you can use to try and control the plans in um, uh, Oracle Standard Edition and Standard Edition 1. You can look to use SQL patches, but I don't actually know anyone who does. What a SQL patch will do, and the, this DBMS SQL Diag internal, which means we're not supposed to use it, and we, uh, what it will do is it will take your SQL statement and it will add this hint to it. And you can have up to 500 characters here, which means you can actually shovel quite a lot of hints in there to try and affect your statement. So if you can't access the source, because it's a third party system, you're able to mess around with the SQL, at least by adding hints here. And this doesn't require licenses. So this can be used also on standard edition. But in 12.2, they've actually changed this so it, it becomes an officially usable package. It's not an internal, we're not supposed to use it package anymore. Um, in 11, Oracle introduced SQL profiles. And SQL profiles uh, are kind of a bunch of hints attached to a SQL plan, which might sound rather familiar. And the driving force is exactly the same. It's intended to provide a way to try and force your query to go down a particular path. And it relies upon this particular hint called optestimate. And what optestimate is, is a type of statistics. Um, 
But it doesn't change the way your statistics change, and so inevitably it's going to be stale very, very quickly. Um, in my experience, SQL profiles may last one or two months, maybe a, a bit longer, and then they become ineffectual because the data distributions in your data has changed, and OptEstimate is no longer accurate enough, which means you've then got to go and regenerate your SQL profiles to make them accurate again. They're basically statistics. They go stale. They don't update every night. They also require the SQL tuning license. And I don't really like them. But there are some use cases for them, especially where you're not using uh, SQL that's entirely based on bind variables, so you can't pick on an individual SQL ID, and you need to do some matching of SQL signatures so you can get a broader range of SQLs to catch with this method. And then finally, Oracle introduced SQL plan management baselines. And the basic premise is. We tell Oracle, you're only allowed to use these plans for this SQL. If a better plan comes along, it will be seen, it will be captured, and Oracle will not be allowed to use it. Unless we say it can. And we've got the ability, though, unlike any of the former methods, to evolve from one baseline to the next baseline and allow the optimizer to accept more baselines and decide which is the best to use, and then we can disable the old ones if we're happy that they're not good anymore. But SQL Plan Management is going to be an Oracle 18 Standard Edition for free. And so when that's released in September, in theory, might be, might not be, um, and actually, the other nice and interesting thing about Oracle's 18 Standard Edition is they're changing how they're coding it. Previously, they used to actually have an entirely separate code path for Standard Edition, and they used to kind of spend a long time hacking it to stop all of the lovely feature, Enterprise Edition features working, and they're now using the same code path. And it's, it's going to be much, much clever, and even better, Oracle XE, same thing. Anyway. Just show you a quick demo of how we capture the baselines. Um, we can capture them from the cursor cache. We can capture them. Yeah, demo five. Let's do demo five here. OK, going to go back to this particular SQL index plan, scan plan, one row, 20,000 rows. We've seen this. Table access full. Now we're going to capture a baseline. I'm capturing it in a way just to run the SQL twice, so I'm telling it to capture baselines. On the session, capture the baseline, run it twice. Oracle sees it on the second invocation. Switch off the capture it for everything. This is how Oracle would intend it to do it. This is what 12.0 was released with. We're going to baseline every bit of SQL in your system. That has issues. And if we look at the baselines, we can see we've captured a baseline. It is enabled and accepted. So if we flush the shared pool for a hard pass, we input, we get a table access full. It was with the scan plan bind variable. And we're told we're using this plan, ending F28. If we try and access via the index plan after flushing the shared pool, we still get a table access full because we've been forced to use the previous plan. I've got about 10 seconds. <laughs> we can then accept this plan by evolving it. We run an execution. And we now have multiple plans enabled and accepted. But it will only run it if the second one is accepted. So there's several different ways to capture the baselines. Oracle automatically evolves them overnight. This isn't good. You might want to get your DBA to switch this off. That's how you switch it off. So to conclude, that was a bit quick at the end, wasn't it? Execution plans are important, especially when you've got a lot of joins. 
in OLTP1 consistency, adapter statistics for BA, data warehouse, and all app. Okay? If you're going to use baselines, keep evolving them, keep on top of them. And I suspect I've got no time for questions. Got five minutes for questions. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Or can I drink my beer in peace? <laughs> yeah, magic. Thank you. Uh, Neil, ha have you maybe investigated when uh, table access by index row ID batched is being chosen instead of regular regular index row, index range scan? Index range scan batched can be really pain in the ass. No, I haven't. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it can be fucked up sometimes. Uh, all the way at the back? <laughs> yes. No. It's just another It's another guess. But, well... <laughs> What it's doing, though, is because it knows, it doesn't just adapt it. It depends how much, how big the difference is between the estimated statistics and the actual statistics. But it is still just another guess. But it's kind of a better guess. Yeah, so, but there's no guarantees. It's a cost-based optimizer. You know, it's, it's uh, the, the, the data's... And also, it's, it's got a limited amount. And also, if, if it starts down one particular path, it, 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 it can get stuck there. If it starts with a merge join, you can't adapt anywhere. 